If you are in any way, shape, or form part of this industry, whether on the manufacturer, supplier, provider, or even the repair and installer side of automotive, if your income or livelihood revolves around automobiles, their parts, their repairs, or customization, you need to make sure you attend this madness at least once in your career. It's not only the what's what of auto aftermarket industry, but it's also the who's who of those that make it happen, cast the vision, and shape the future of what we all do in this industry. Welcome to the Mind Wrench Podcast with your host, Rick Sellover, where minor adjustments produce major improvements in mindset, personal growth, and success. This is the place to be every Monday where we make small improvements and take positive actions in our business and personal lives that will make a major impact in our success, next level growth, and quality of life. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mind Wrench Podcast. This weekly show is the personal and professional development podcast designed primarily for those serving the automotive repair industry, where we share simple, yet effective strategies with personal and practical insights on mindset, self-improvement, and leadership that anyone can use for a more successful shop and a next-level life. I'm your host, Rick Silover. Thanks so much for tuning in and spending a few minutes with me today. I truly hope you find something of value here. If you haven't done so already, and you really like what I'm sharing here, please hit the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. And make sure you share this podcast with others, because when you share the show, the show grows, and I get to help more people. And that's why I do this podcast. Okay, it's been a few days now. My head has stopped spinning from the crazy pace, the neon LED distractions, and the tight time schedules, and I'm back in my normal time zone. I finally caught up in some much-missed sleep, and I've had a little time to reflect on my first experience at SEMA. First thing that comes to mind is, wow, what a wild frickin' ride. Second thing that came to mind was, why the hell did I wait so long to attend this legendary event? Before I even get into it, this I must say. If you are in any way, shape, or form part of this industry, whether on the manufacturer, supplier, provider, or even the repair installer side of automotive, if your income or livelihood revolves around automobiles, their parts, their repairs, or customization, you need to make sure you attend this madness at least once in your career. It's not only the what's what of auto aftermarket industry, but it's also the who's who of those that make it happen, cast the vision, and shape the future of what we all do in this industry. It's a great place to connect with our peers, suppliers, creators, or inventors of the newest technology, tools, and equipment, our industry leaders, social media influencers, movers, shakers, and many of the auto world's icons. This week, I wanted to share some of my observations and takeaways from my week in Vegas, just trying to absorb as much of this four-wheeled world as possible. First thing I noticed, we are no longer scared of big crowds. We are no longer afraid to get together to enjoy the excitement of events or being together, celebrating, socializing, like we did back in the good old days, you know, pre-COVID. And most of us really finally felt normal again, and we were able to enjoy ourselves in the company of others. Lots of smiles, lots of laughing, hugs, and handshakes. It was a beautiful thing. Something else I noticed was the auto repair industry was back, baby, both in exhibitors and attendance. With the exception of a few auto manufacturers and a couple paint companies, SEMA attendance was at its full pre-2019 glory. I read recently there was over 120,000 people in attendance. Although I spent most of my time tens of thousands of steps each day, in the collision sections of the show, I did try to see some of the other display areas within the massive Las Vegas Convention Center's 4.6 million square feet of exhibit space. And that's not counting the event-jammed parking spaces around the center. There were many custom builders vying for the Battle of the Builders top prize. There were wheels and tires, hot rods, racing and performance sections, trucks and four-wheelers and off-road display space inside and outside power sports, utility vehicles and accessories, as well as a complete floor of one hall just for restyling and car care accessories. Hell, I never even knew there was that many different ceramic coating companies and products. Holy shit. Much floor space was dedicated to ADAS equipment and training, calibration software, and equipment companies and tons of training events from ICAR and SCRS, just to name a few. 
While I spent a majority of my time with the collision-related floors of the show, I was able to connect with many of the top product and service companies, education providers, and influencers in the collision space, and I was also able to spend a lot of time talking with collision shop owners. Some I knew, some I just met. And I noticed a very strong recurring theme of those conversations. Along with other conversations I've been part of online in the past year or so, there seems to be a heavy movement, an awakening, or almost what I would coin as a repair evolution, a repair professionals taking back control of how they operate their shops. No longer easily bending to the will of the insurance providers or DRP programs. No longer giving up and backing down when they're told, oh, we don't pay for that, or nobody else charges for that by the carriers. They have been educating themselves on the importance of safe and proper repairs, understanding the need to follow OEM recommended repair procedures, and the liability that rests on the shoulders of the shop owners to ensure and document that they are following the correct repair procedures, and with that, insisting that they be properly compensated for the work that is needed to be completed, and adapting to having the right conversation with their potential customers before they even start a repair, to explain clearly what is needed, why the OEM recommends certain procedures, how that relates to the safety features of their car, and what those costs look like, while also explaining why some carriers will not concede to paying those necessary repairs and how the customer may be responsible for those costs. And here's the key, finding success with getting paid. There is a growing faction of shop owners now actively moving away from their DRP relationships. Yeah, the very ones they were praying for five to ten years ago. And taking ownership of the relationship with the real customers, the vehicle owners. I'm also seeing many rate increases across the country, some in large jumps of six to eight bucks per hour. With the backlog of work most shops are experiencing right now, it really seems to be one of the most profitable times in our recent history for collision repair. And the opportunities in calibration services and specialization in repairs such as EVs seems to have unlimited potential. With all this great potential, there also appears to be an intense thirst for knowledge, education, and training on all the tools technology, software, and equipment required to run a successful modern-day collision center capable of safe and proper repairs on today's mobile phones on wheels. Have you ever looked in the mirror and said to yourself, how come I'm not further along than this? Or why can't I ever seem to get ahead? Are you frustrated with life, unsure of your future, wanting to make a change in your current situation, but too scared to make that next move? Maybe you want to reach that next level in life or in your business but not sure what the right move is. Or maybe you feel the best thing to do is nothing at all. Many of you may not know, but along with hosting my own weekly podcast, I'm a personal development, mindset, business, and life coach, where I focus on helping people with self-development, mindset, and how to make positive changes in their lives. And trust me, with all the negativity we've had to deal with these past two years, I think we all need some positivity. A positive change and a fresh approach to our life or our business in 2022. Sometimes, talking to the right person can make all the difference. If you really want to start making those changes in your life, take action right now. Reach out and email, text, call, or direct message me as soon as possible. Do it right now. I'll set you up with a free consultation call and pre-qualify you for either the one-on-one or business coaching that you really need to get your life or your business on the right track to success. Appointments are available right now. Industry events like this are the perfect breeding ground for collaboration, brainstorming solutions, and masterminding new ways of doing business and revenue streams with some of the brightest minds in the collision repair world. Like you would expect at such a popular event, there are plenty of celebrities to see and industry icons to meet, maybe get an autograph, or just let them know that you appreciate their contributions to our trade. But you didn't always have to line up at a booth at a certain time to see them. No, some could be found just wandering around various parts of the show, checking things out for themselves, and would stop and chat. Big names like race car driving legends Richard Petty and Mario Andretti, one of the kings of car customization, Gene Winfield, well-known builders like Chip Foose and Dave Kindig, or collision industry leaders like Mike Anderson or Jeff Hendler were easily accessible and happy to chat. Although I'm not an autograph hound or celebrity chaser, I was absolutely thrilled to spend some time talking with a couple of this industry's paradigm shifters, individuals that made massive difference in how we improve this business through organizations and collaborating, and a software and technology wizard that is probably one of the most relevant people in our collision industry today. Just by chance, I ran into the soft-spoken man by the name of Jeff Handler, 
Some of you recognize that name as a former chairman of CIC, that's the Collision Industry Conference, whom his daughter Jordan now chairs. But what I didn't know was Jeff has been a founder or chairperson of so many other industry organizations, helping them form the right structure, such as CIC, ICAR, what we now know as the ASA, the SCRS, and the Hall of Eagles, which is the collision industry's equivalent of the Hall of Fame, as well as organizing and launching the golf outings for NABC and CREF. He was telling me the story of how back in the early 2000s, he attended SEMA and saw the small couple thousand square feet of collision space, found the organizers of the event, and convinced them he could help them expand that part of the show to what is now a major part of the SEMA experience. I also had the privilege of hanging out a bit with a brilliant guy I've become friends with over the past year or so and helped him celebrate the most incredible, rewarding week of his lifelong career. Frank Turlip's historic week started out on Monday with his invention, Test Drive Copilot, being awarded SEMA's Collision New Product of the Year, which is an extremely huge deal and an excellent accomplishment. It was also a runner-up in the new ADAS product segment as well and won a SEMA Global Media Award. On Tuesday, Frank was formally inducted as chairman of CIC. On Wednesday, he received the SICA Chairman Award and was inducted into the Collision Industry Hall of Eagles and also competed in the finals of SEMA's Launchpad competition. Now, undoubtedly, that much attention and recognition would go to most people's heads, but not Frank, no. He is one of the most humblest people I've ever met in this industry. But I can tell you this, he sure had a smile glued to his face that week, and I know he has plenty more to accomplish. There was also an extra large dose of good feelings being shared when NABC and Recycle Rides did a massive presentation awarding nine well-deserving military families in the Las Vegas area with like brand new refurbished vehicles, generously supplied by the hard work, donations, and hustle from many MSOs, collision shops, insurance carriers, and suppliers, all coming together for a great cause. There was also several networking events, breakfast meetings, evening mixers, and unique get-togethers where one could spend time connecting with some of the most influential people in this industry. Fortunately, I was invited to and was able to attend a few of these and meet some really great men and women that are helping shape the future of collision repair. There was one SCRS networking mixer in particular that I really wanted to attend on Thursday night. It was at the top penthouse of the Westgate Hotel in the Elvis Suite. That's right, the top floor of that hotel was customized and reserved as living quarters for Elvis back when he used to have his nightly show there, when it was the International Hotel. I just had to see this. Unfortunately, that required a special event pass you had to buy, and I missed the deadline to purchase a ticket. But someone at the convention center had mentioned that I might be able to purchase a pass right at the event itself. Sweet, I thought. So I arrived early to the Westgate that night, hoping to find a place to get my pass, only to find a little lady at the elevator who was telling everybody without a pass, nobody would get on the elevator to the penthouse. No exceptions. That's it. Well, shit. Now what do I do? Well, I tried my best to text, instant message on Facebook, or call someone I knew that was already up there. But nobody was answering, which I don't blame when it was a party going on. After a half hour or so, I just decided it wasn't going to happen and started heading for the monorail to take me back to my hotel. But just in the nick of time, one of my co-hosts from the Collision Cocktail Hour, Laura Gay, called me and said that one of my friends, John Shoemaker from BSF, and BSF was the one sponsoring the event, would hook me up and meet me at the elevator with my pass. All right, I'm in. Sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? Needless to say, it was an awesome party, and I'm so grateful to Laura and John for helping me out. Well, the week went by so quick and ended much sooner than I would have liked, and before I knew it, I was on my flight back to Detroit, replaying all the incredible moments in my mind, like the highlight reel of a Super Bowl victory. So for this 40-plus year veteran of the collision industry, who never understood all the hype around SEMA, always putting off making it a priority to attend, making excuses in my mind that would just be a waste of time and air for her to go see a big car show, letting my limiting beliefs call the shots for me, I'm so grateful that I pushed through the excuses, made the commitment, booked the trip, and went. And three things stuck in my mind. Number one, wow, what a wild frickin' week. Two, why the hell did I wait so long to attend? And three, I can't wait until next year. I'll be there. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Next year, they're expanding the show in size, events, and activities. And I'm going to take over a bigger chunk of Las Vegas. And naming it SEMA Week. So hopefully I'll see all of you there next year. 
Well, that's all I had for you today. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate your support, and I hope you have a great week. I can always be reached at www.ricksillover.com, where you can find all my social media links, podcast episodes, blog posts, and much more. Yeah.